This just looks like a little lagoon in here. Huh? Yeah, yep. You got a nice hard sandbar flat, like kind of on this side. And then we got this nice little soft mud. These fish kind of push up in here and have their own little playground. Look at that. That's a black tip, isn't it? We got world record size bonnet heads. The world record all for them bonnet heads are wide open. Looked like there was a little bit of pushing going on in the back. He's gone to coming. Oh, the tail popped out. Fish on. All right, nice job, man. Come on, baby, you're running to us. Nice job. I really don't think you know he's hooked yet. <laughs> I have a big old fluke on there. Feels kind of like a big flounder. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a real big flounder. That's yeah, a nice red oh, fish. a nice red yeah. fish. All right. Well, how about that? A little red fish right here in Charleston. How about that? Welcome to this episode of Addicted Fishing. We are in Charleston, South Carolina. A lot of history in this area. We're fishing back in the marsh, otherwise known as the Low Country. Got Captain Chris Wilson with us. That's right. You say you've seen a pretty good increase in the uh, in your clientele coming in since the most oil in the Gulf. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, this is one neat place here. This reminds me a lot of Louisiana here, except you got a lot of tide flow, a lot of fresh water. Kind of all depends on what that Mississippi's doing. Yep. Come on out of here, baby. See you on journey. Well, he jumped all over that DOA. Yeah, he did. What color was that again? The Arkansas Glow. There you go. I think he's about ready. Come here, Mr. Redfish. South Carolina Redfish. Yeah, pretty fish. A low country red. Now, we got these rigged a little bit different. We're not using the DOA cow jig heads. Using the uh, laser sharp swim bait hooks with a little... Uh, Eighth ounce weight in there, and it is getting the job done. Matching the hatch with all these little finger mullets. Yeah, these finger mullet, just like you said, are gonna be all around down my neck of the woods here in yep. about uh, about a month and a half, two months. Exactly. That's a pretty stout little redfish. Yeah, it is. See you later, baby. Not a lesion on him. Nice job. Off he goes. Tough to see him disappear in that water. That's like, <laughs> you know, your, your fingers go down about two inches and it disappears. Is that about your average size around here? About that, you know, anywhere from probably about four or five pounds on up to about 10, 12 pounds, some of the bigger ones. And it's low tide now, and when the water starts pushing in here, it's gonna look, get a little bit cleaner. Yep. And what uh, what Chris says we're gonna do later on this afternoon is this tide comes up, and just like in Jacksonville, back in my home state, you fish the flood tide, and it gets all up on top of this grass, and the redfish get tailing in there. Right when that mullet run starts to start off, those fish get really fat from the summertime, and then, you know, these flood tides like this too, these fish are going up in that grass eating those crabs, so they're getting pretty fat off those crabs too. We're gonna pluck around and hit a bunch of different spots right now. Uh, just show you what's here. We're waiting for the flood tide. Y'all stay tuned to this episode. Captain Chris Wilson, right here in South Carolina. All right. Let's go then. Oh, there he is. Come on out, baby. Nice job, Blair. That looks like a pretty good size little yeah. redfish. Tons of little mullets and stuff in here, too. Well, welcome back. We've changed positions now. We kind of come on this side of the sun, this side of the wind. We're going to work this bank on down. They're gonna face out on these coves right here and just kind of stage out front, facing into the, uh, with the tide bringing the bait and everything to us. And they'll just be staging off these two points. And we need to work out all the way down through here and throw up into these coves. There he is. All right. He's up in there close. Yeah. Feels like a good one. Where's he going? Going around. Captain Chris scores on the DOA shrimp. <clears throat> you still got that shrimp on, right? Uh, no, it's that little five or four inch oh. jerk shad. Cool beans, a four inch cow. Pick that thing up right next to the shell. Like a nice little fat red. Yeah. Ooh. Quick one too. Yeah, he is. 
So that's about the average size? This would be definitely in our slot 17 to 23 inches. 17 to 23. How many are you allowed to keep a day? Uh, three a person. Three a person. So that one there would be a perfect one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those size right there are absolutely just delicious. And we've had them like that, you know, learn how to do redfish on the half shell. Mm -hmm. When I was out there visiting all my buddies in Louisiana, and that was a, just an awesome dish to make. Yeah. Well, cool beans, man. This guy's talking up a storm for us. Yeah, he is. I love how their tail lights up that green color right there. Yeah. You know, they say, you know, we hear a lot of it, uh, that, that's the blue and the iodine from the shrimps and the crabs that they eat. And well, I've noticed that's, you know, a lot of times when they're turned on and excited, mm -hmm. it'll turn even, you know, a more royal green, purplish blue like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. When they're not all lit up like that, yeah. they don't eat. Well, that is one pretty red fish there. Yeah. yeah. Let him go and let him grow up and be a mugging one day. That's right. All yeah. right, let's put this little guy back in the water. Wake up here a little bit. Give him that little tap on his head. There he goes. Hey, cool beans. Cool, man. Well, let's see if they'll hit this. What bait you got on there? Same I've color. Got, I got the same color. It's just that little jerk, four inch jerk. It looks just like all the little mullet that are in here right now. Yep. So that's why we're throwing these. Let's, all right, let's, let's throw again and see if yeah. we can get another. Yeah, so if they're all smaller slots in here, I'm glad I switched to the 6.8. Yeah, definitely. That's a, uh, that's a 7.2 you got there, I think. Yep. Yep. Six to 12. And you got a uh, you got 10 pound, and that's the shock absorbing. So if you get a big fish on there, yeah, that fins. It's the only line out there, spectra fiber that'll stretch. It's got a 10% stretch to it. It's pretty yeah. cool stuff. And I'm throwing the uh, the fins wind tamer here. Gotcha. Yeah, scaling down on this smaller tackle with a smaller size fish in these slot sizes definitely yeah. makes it a lot funner. Makes it a lot more fun. Yeah. You say so just keep pounding these coves. Huh? Yeah, we just keep pounding these outsides of these coves on these points. And like I said, these fish are just staging out front, making their way back up to that grass. Hopefully this afternoon we'll have some good tailing action on the flood tides. Cool. The flood tides. Like I say, they got nuts over them here. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Hey. Come on out, baby. Nice job, Larry. That looks like a pretty good size of a yeah. red fish. Let's see if I can get in there and get the double Feels pretty good on this 6.8. Yeah. <laughs> These are nice, nice rods. They've got good sensitivity, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, this one. I was out actually getting, uh, I gotta get off this bank a little bit. He's gonna get me in that oyster. Oh, oh, oh did you get a hit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at all the muds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We were out in Lake Harney with this rod the other day, catching big old shell crackers. Oh yeah? Yeah, my buddy Billy Henderson called me up. Thanks, Billy, by the way. He said that, uh, said, dude, the shell crackers are everywhere, dude. <laughs> so Come we on. went over there and went out wading for them and we waxed them. Nice. It was fun. First time I've been freshwater fishing in like 20 years. There he is. Look at that fish. Yeah. Nice. Nice, Blair. Might get that Minn coat up a little. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, hold on. I think I can get it. Good job, Got man. <laughs> yeah, I think he's about ready. Got a little salad he's hanging on to. Yeah. Not a bad little redfish. Yeah. And when they want. give them up, they give up, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Come here, dude. All right there. You hear that guy drumming from out here? Yeah, he's, he's drumming like crazy. Yep. Look at that. All right. That laser sharp right where it's supposed to be. Yep. Nice job. Look at that pretty fish. Pretty. Now you can see out here where these fish are hanging on these oyster beds, root, rooting around. Look at the scratches all on his belly. And you'll see him up underneath his chin a lot of time when they're in there eating crabs and stuff. They've marked themselves all up. We've got a lot of little uh, fiddler crabs, and we also have a pretty good population of little stone crabs that all live up in these oyster beds. So these guys love to eat a crab, so well, they'll well, go. Who don't like eating stone crabs? <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Blair. Let me get this dude back on in there. Well, cool beans, man. Hey, you call it right in those coves, brother. Yeah. Good, good job. Good. Hey, if y'all ever get a chance to do this, definitely look him up. You got a website? Yeah, it's uh, charlestonflyfishingguide.com. charlestonflyfishingguide.com. Dot com. Cool beans, you ready to do it again? Yeah, man. Well, y'all stay tuned. We're gonna reposition the boat. See if we can show you another redfish right here from Charleston, South Carolina. Be right back. Let's go then. Oh, there he is, brother. Nice job, man. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> if that wasn't killer, <laughs> that is so awesome. Keep your eyes peeled because we might see a couple guys floating on top that are just cruising through here too. Oh, look at that. 
about two bow lengths. He's going away from us. Yep, right in that direction. Just keep watching the grass. You'll see the grass is just kind of bouncing back and forth. He He's is. just snaking through the grass. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Fish on, yeah. brother. Nice job, man. <laughs> nice job. Right in the grass. Well, welcome back. As you can see, we are in the grass. Nice job, Blair. And this is so much fun. We've been in here waiting and waiting and waiting for this tide to come up. And it's finally come up far enough. And uh, these guys are just in here tailing like crazy. We've been tossing on a couple here and there. Yeah. Normally right here is dry. Absolute dry. Look at that fish all lit up. Look at that pretty red fish. You ready for him? Yeah, let me slide in there. Slide back. Tail all lit up, same yeah. color as the rod. <laughs> there you go. Hey, these guys might be small, but the way we're doing it now, we're, we've waited and waited and waited for the tide to come up. And as you can see, it's finally come up high enough where it's basically filled up the little low spots in here. And what these red fish are doing, they're up in here eating all the fiddler crabs that are in here and all the other little, that you know, little shrimp, shrimp and whatnot. So as you can see, I got the DOA shrimp here basically on a swim bait hook again. And I'm just reeling it through the grass when I see them and you drop it right on their heads and boom, they jump on it. Pretty little fish, huh? Definitely pretty little fish. All right. Send him back on the way. He was ready. That is a well-deserved redfish. Thank you. Gonna shake your hand on that one, I tell you. Good job, man. Now what he's done, we've pushed back in here as far as we can get basically in these little ponds. And we only have probably, what, an hour, hour and a half to yeah, fish? Yeah, about that, yeah. But the redfish get in here and they tail in the grass and uh, let's go find another yeah, one. Yeah, That was cool. Cool, good that job, cool. man. All right, I saw another one down here at the bottom. All right, look here, Blair, here's one right here. Right here, he's him. moving left to right. Oh, oh, oh I got him, I got By him. By three o'clock, three o'clock. He's, He's coming right to you. Wind it up, drop it right in his face. Wind it up, drop it in his face. Oh my God! Nice, brother. <laughs> Woo, great job, Blair. Great job. <laughs> That's no mosquito lagoon, Redfish. Great that job, man. like he's from Louisiana. <laughs> wow, that was such a cool take. That was a cool take. Oh. Come on, dude. Trying to stay underneath this ranger. He likes this little phantom. <laughs> it pulling all right through the grass for you? Yeah, man, this thing does really good. Cool. Are you, you want to stay on up there? He's talking about that pink color in these fish. Where do you see how red this fish is? Absolutely awesome. I'm glad we downsized on this tackle too. Yep. This makes it that much more fun. Got another one in sight back there behind us again. <laughs> look how look at the color on that fish. Look at his tail. Yeah, so this is a golden redfish here. Swim bait hook did his job. Look at that pretty redfish. No spots on the on this side. Look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Golden. <laughs> Looks like a little pumpkin. But look at that, no spots on that side whatsoever. That fish had some really pretty color. That's like I was saying, you can see these fish when they're up here in that grass. They're lit up, pumpkin orange, just kind of floating through the grass. Yeah. And off he goes. <laughs> Good job, man. I'm so glad when you called me and said, hey, we got a great flood tide. You got to get up here this date, this date, this date. So if he ever calls you and says, get here, the flood tide's here, make sure you come. And if he's not, if he happens to be booked at the time, he's got you know plenty of other guides you can turn on to, right? Most definitely. Yeah. Cool beans. You got old Champ Smith up here. He That's can, right. He can put you all over these fish too. So y'all come up here and give this a shot. This is neat. This is really neat. So you got another one up here? Yeah, there was another one right. He's up a little bit further. You going to the right? right. Yeah. See the grass twitching? Oh yeah. yeah. There he is, brother. Nice job, man. <laughs> nice job. If that wasn't killer. That is so awesome. Great job, man. Great job. 
<laughs> nice spot there, brother. That one was a cool spot there. <laughs> here I go. Got him? Yeah. Alders right here, just in case I see him. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, tail all lit up. Man, these are such pretty redfish. Perfectly symmetrical. Show you how I have that rig, so make sure you all pay attention to the rig it right today. Beautiful little redfish. Hey, man. In the grass, this is so cool. Can't tell you how, how cool this is when we were watching this probably an hour ago. Ooh. <laughs> we were watching this whole area probably an hour ago and it was it was dry up here I mean it was literally dry there were birds wading in the mud up here so and that's something that kind of it, it amazes me because yeah. where I grew up and fish for redfish there is no tide flow we yeah. go by the salooner tables yep. and you know, that's the never leave fish to find fish type sure. of area <laughs> the cool thing about this is it's hunting and fishing all in one hunting and fishing all in one yep. stalking them Y'all yep. stay tuned, we'll be right back with some more addictive fishing right here in the Low Country with Captain Chris Wilson. We'll be right back. Y'all ready to see what we're whacking these redfish on? Stay tuned up next is the Rig It Right. On today's Rig It Right segment, I'm gonna show you what I was throwing out there in the Low Country of South Carolina. If y'all ever get a chance to go down there and fish it, great place to go catch redfish one of the best red fisheries i've ever seen out there i was throwing the doa cow arkansas shad and this one here i normally throw a jig head in it but i was throwing the laser sharp and this is the 1 8 ounce swim bait hook and it's got a great little screw head right in here that goes into the top ahead of, of the bait if you get a big redfish on he's tugging on that bait it's more likely not to come off and you get to use that bait over and over again I was throwing the 25 pound test Seaguar fluorocarbon and just because there's so many oyster shells up there in Charleston, you got to put on a little bit heavier leader because if you get a little nick on it, it's more likely to break and if you're using that a good abrasion resistance like the Seaguar, you know, got more chance of catching that fish out there and like I say, when you're using fluorocarbon, if it works one time during the day, it's done its job for me. I was throwing the Finns Wind Tamer and I was using a 10 pound test just because it was windy out there today. I was using the 6'9 Flats Blue Wright McGill Signature Series Rod. If you can tell, it's blue and it don't spook the fish when you're waving it over their heads. And uh, Chris stayed with a 7'2. He was able to punch it through the wind out there. We were catching all the redfish we could stand that day. If y'all ever get a chance, make sure you head there to Charleston. You can catch yourself a bunch of redfish. Remember one thing, you can get all these products at your Charleston Dicks, at any Dicks in Florida. All this stuff's right there. Remember one thing though, every season starts at Dicks. Rig it right by Wright and Miguel. And thank goodness for the old riptide because <laughs> when it turned around and started dropping, it, it drops is, quick. It is <laughs> dropping quick. You really got to pay attention. We, we took it basically to the last minute. Yeah, yeah. I would say that was really close to the last minute. Exactly. We were like bumping on them moisture bars and you could hear them scraping underneath the boat a little bit. <laughs> just one more fish, just one more fish. <laughs> You know, it was uh, it was quite an experience seeing the flood tide. Cool. You know, I've heard it so much up here in Charleston about you know you got to come fish the flood tide, you got to come fish it. So yeah, I do appreciate the opportunity and the invite. No problem, brother. Come we... up here and do it. You know, we like I said, we we gave it to the last minute out there trying to show you another redfish, but uh, I had fun. Something you can do, you say, twice a month here. Oh no, you can start it. You can do it twice a month, and it starts about about mid April and uh, runs all the way to about end of October. Cool. Yeah. But you get the flood tides. Yep. Flood tides. Awesome. So if y'all ever get the chance to do this, don't forget about the website, addictivefishing.com. You can check us out on Facebook. I'm sure there's going to be some good talk about him. There is already up here. Everybody talking about, yeah, y'all are going to catch some fish with those guys up oh, there. Yeah. Good so uh, y'all get a chance, like I say, come do this. If, you're, if you have the opportunity to do a flood tide, definitely do a flood tide along with the morning shot. It's, yep. uh, it's great. I appreciate it. No problem. Glad having you. Once again, don't forget about the website and Facebook and all that good stuff. And we'll see y'all next week from another exotic location. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. Ooh. Now see if I can do what I can do. Oh, yeah. One spot on each side. Yeah. Ooh, he ate it. There he is. Nice. Oh, come on. Oh, he let it go. Let it go. Oh. Uh oh.